Okay, Dave, thanks for joining us and having a, a catch up ahead of the weekend, of course, it's coming up. First of all, a uh, bit of business done, done and dusted, made a double signing this week, one a season long loan, one a permanent one with plenty of experience. How pleased are you about that? Yeah, I think you, we're always pleased when we bring new players in because we feel as though we're going to improve the team. And that's what you know both Kane and Sean are hopefully going to do. That's the plan. I feel as though we've got a couple of good ones and uh, hopefully that'll pan out over the course of the season. They're both at different stages in their careers, aren't they? You know, we, the, the Kane's coming up from... Southampton is well renowned for its academy and production of players, and Sean's done it all and got got the T-shirt. What was your what was your selling point, Dave, to to both of those players that you've been dealing with? Um, a couple of things. Well, three things primarily. One, it's a fantastic football club that's stable from top to bottom, which in this day and age um, is relevant but it's not as important maybe as the other two. One being, we'll, we'll develop both players. Even Sean at 32, you know, if you ask Chris Port how he developed over the last four years, I'm 100% certain to say yes. We've, I think we've made him a better player for it. But he's still scoring 10 plus goals every season. Even, you know, even at 36, 37. Well, that's not because he's got uh, quicker it's because he's using his brain more, for example. And we've said that we'll, we'll do the same with Sean. And I've got no doubt that that'll be the case. And obviously that's the case with Kane because he's not as experienced. So that's the first two bits. You know, stable football club. The fact that we'll develop them. And the third bit is we're the best football team in the division. And, you know, and that's not just me saying that. I've, I've said, I said to both them players particularly, I said, you go and ask as many people as you can about us. You know, so don't believe my word for it because you'll think I'm biased or a nutcase or somewhere on that spectrum. So you go and speak to all the people in the in the league, people, people who saw us, and you'll form your own opinion. But I'm confident that they will come back and say we are an excellent footballing team. So, um, you know, if you want to play the right way, what I feel is the right way anyway, then we're an attractive proposition to you. Of course, there's some downsides in terms of finances and all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, there's, for me, the value in the other areas that I mentioned far outweighs monetary, it does. Um, you know, so they're the three main points. I think the fact that we treat people properly, I treat people properly, the staff treat people properly is important as well. So when you factor it all in, I think we're quite a fairly attractive proposition. Getting the two lads in, plus you've got uh, Christopher Long as well. That's three done. How close is that now to what you require, you think, for the start uh, with adding these two lads? No, we've, we've got a couple more to do at least. Um, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Um, you know, we've... we've you know, we won't lose anyone unless somebody makes an outrageous bid. We're, we're all um, unequivocal on that. Um, any player who's in any doubt, their agents know exactly where they stand, so I'm not looking to replace anyone. Or we're not looking to replace anyone. Um, so we think two, maybe three more, possibly a fourth, but that's probably unlikely. depends on, on numerous factors between now and the, now and the start of the season. Um, and then we'll 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 go from there. Just want to look a little bit more in depth at the uh, your latest recruits. Looking first of all at Kane Ramsey, who had a an interesting start, hasn't he? He's played in the Premier League twice against Manchester United and, and Manchester City. He's got a long term contract there at Southampton. It's his second loan spell, a sh time at at Shrewsbury. You, you would have done your own work on him as well. You, you don't just go in blindfolded. What uh, What is he? What, what what sort of fullback defender is he? Well, I think the first thing to say is when I told the when I told the staff we were signing Kane, they thought we were getting a number nine. <laughs> I'm pretty certain Harry's beyond us. I think that's the first thing we should say. Um, <laughs> so when it 
you know, when when they all sort of sat back down at their desks after jumping out of the chair, they realised that actually we've, we've, we've still got a good Premier League player. And yeah, he might not be experienced as Harry Kane or as good as him yet, but he's got a good chance. He's got a good chance. Uh, he's a sensible lad. He's enthusiastic. He's bright. He's got a real good personality, a lovely personality about him. You know, picked him up on the train station twice. And the second time, first thing he said after a law were, talk to me about Southgate. He just wanted to talk about football straight away. And I thought, he'll do for me, this lad. You know, no, no shyness about him. Um, you know, and all that's important. All that personality stuff's important. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, you don't get to play in the Premier League, whether it's one game, two games, or 200 games, if you're, if you're not very good. Um, so don't get me wrong, it's a baptism of the fire playing against both Manchester clubs. But knowing Kane in the short time I've known him, I know that that won't have phased him. So I'm pretty certain that he'll be able to handle League One. He's had a very brief spell at, at uh, Shrewsbury before COVID hit, where he probably was a bit of an awakening for him. It was probably, um, you know, a, a real eye-opener. So we're hoping that he comes in and he knows exactly what he's letting himself in for um, because, you know, he needs to play the games. And we're going to help him along the way. And so that's Kane. He's a, he's a, he's a solid character and he's a solid, um, a solid player. That's what we think we've got. And we're going to help him. In, in various aspects, certainly going forward, and the hope that we make him a better player because that's the plan. Well, let's look at your other boy, the central McDonald. He has a wealth of experience, doesn't he? He's had some terrific clubs, been a Welsh international. Is it something that you like? What 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 do you see him adding to it? Because you two or three years ago you brought a Paul Green in who did exceptionally well for you in that midfield department. Yeah, well, Sean is. Um, He's had a terrific career already, similar to Greeny. And we want him to, to replicate the impact that Greeny had at this football club. He'll probably be playing in a slightly different role, but he's a good footballer, hence why he's had such a good career already. And he wants to get back to playing good football. He hasn't done that for the last couple of years where he's been. Where he's not, you know, the big attraction for sure, and he's actually playing the right way. And, and, and we know he can do that because he's had the career he's had. And that's what whets his appetite. So, you know, he's going to be asked plenty of questions in terms of getting on the ball. Are you as good as what you say you are? I'm sure he is. In fact, I know he is. But he's going to get run down his neck, marked, not marked. And he's going to have to play and start the moves off first because that's the plan. Um, and he's going to relish that. He has, he's told me he's relishing that already. So, you know, that's the plan for him. He's a terrific, solid character again. You know, proper solid guy. No airs and graces about him. We'll fit right in. Um, you know, and we think we've got a, got a cracker, to be honest. So, you know, we. I think he's going to be pivotal, to be honest. And he's going to help Josh Lundstrom no end. You know, because Josh, if he doesn't do it, then Josh will be there, that's for sure. Talk more about Josh Lundstrom in a, a few minutes' time. Just moving on then. You've already, you know, sort of guided as to where you are with, with your targets, that you're moving on and roughly how many you want. There's a lot of clubs, isn't it? With, it seems though there's an intent on spending big. I've been reading from certain managers saying it looks ridiculous what's happening in League One. Massive clubs with massive money that they're going to spend. Do you feel as though now it's all signed to deliver what you've got in terms of clubs you're playing? That you're going to be more competitive last year? And is it harder for you in the transfer market? Do you have to be more smarter? We always have to be smart. We always have to be smart. There's no getting around that. Um, there's some big clubs in this division, some huge clubs that shouldn't be in this division, but they are. And they've been here, some of them, a while. And that's, you know, that's, that's the way it is. So we always have to be. Uh, you know, not necessarily think outside the box, but we've, we've certainly got to um, act smart, play smart, you know, and when you are um, in a position we're in, it makes you really, really focused. 
it, it, it does. It makes you focus on what, what do you really need? What do you really need? Do we get it right all the time? No. It's, that's because, as we said before, recruitment is an art and not a, a, an exact science, even though with, with the amount of data people are trying to make it more of a science, and I get that, but it's still not an exact science. Um, so, you know, we've got to always work harder, always, because we can't be frivolous. And we do. And that's why we've had the success we've had. So, um, yeah, it's, it is. People are spending extortionate amounts of money. But I'll be honest with you, it doesn't really affect us because people don't have to spend extortionate amounts of money to, to affect us. They can spend a, a fair degree of money and it still affects us. Never mind good money and extortionate money. You know, there's, there's levels, and because there's two or three that are spending extortionate money, everyone underneath that are complaining. Well, if we complained every time somebody spent just a few bob, we'd be complaining all the time. So, you know, that's the world we live in. You know, so we had the lowest budget in the league last year. It's no secret. I'm not saying it to get a violin out or anything like that. That's just where we are. And usually, league tables are in, you know, proportionally. Um, correlated to, to, to net spend. So if we were to finish 12th, I bet we had the highest value added of any team in League One. Maybe even across the league, I don't know. Um, but that's that's the world we live in, so it doesn't really affect us. If you know, It might affect your, your teams from sort of 5th to 12th that are trying and spending a fortune compared to us. Because they see people spending a hell of a lot of money, um, but you know, them teams to twelve spend far too much money compared to us. So it doesn't make any difference to us, really. Well, while you've been busy bringing you a couple of your players from from outside the club, a number of your own have agreed and signed new deals, which you're always, you know, grateful of, and that's what you're trying to do. We'll talk a bit about Callum Ailey in a moment who's time, but I'm talking of Josh Lundstrom. Regan Griffiths, Billy Sass Davis, contract triggered by the club itself. And just looking at them three lads, they're now in their early 20s, Dave. It's time for first team football, is it, for them? Breakthrough time. Yeah, all three have had a taste of first team football. You know, Regan and um, Billy have been out in the National League the last two or three months and done well. They've done well, both of them. Regan, when he played against Holland, the Czech trade, did very well. So he's He's close. He's close. Make no bones about it. Billy's obviously had a terrific time at Yeovil and he's done well. And obviously Josh, up until um, breaking his leg, no, stress fracture, um, he played against Bolton and was terrific. For example, he played two or three games. He was due to start against Oxford in the game that got called off last season down at their place. So we know he's close as well. So them three are going along Really nice, and they've they've got a <clears throat> everyone's got a big season ahead of them. But them two, I'm expecting them to play games in the first team, um, all three of them. And I don't mean two or three. I'm on about you know Travis. I think played twelve games last year, something like that, 10, 12 games, which was a terrific return for Travis. I'm expecting them three to play at least ten or twelve. To be honest, um, is it going to be easy for him to get in and play that many? No, I don't imagine it will be. But that's what the that's what the aim is for them three particularly. Just bring us up to an eight because it seems as though we just keep waiting for that ink to dry on Callum Ainley. Where, where, where yeah. are you? <clears throat> we, we we're very close. It's just a case of lawyers now, really. Um, the, the, the agreements and principles there. So we just I've got to speak to his agent today, um, which I'd have done yesterday, but for unforeseen circumstances. Really, so um, we'll get that. I would imagine that's imminent. I was interested in a fact that came out, Dave, uh, the other day. I'm pretty sure it's genuine and it'll be right. 14 players from your academy last season played League One football. I think that's pretty good, isn't it? You must be right up there, and it just shows once again the success of long term building 
that it can be a success at academy level? Yeah, I think um, I'm just the the iceberg. You know, you go all the way back down to Matty Freeman, who does our six, sevens and eights, who nobody's probably heard of. He's a terrific guy. And you go with with Sam Petit and Belly and Ryan and Jacko and Will Ryder and Aidan, who oversees it all. you know, you've, you've got all these coaches who are wonderful coaches, absolutely wonderful coaches, before they even get to me, Kenny and Alex, you know. But because we're on the same page as the academy staff and the academy staff are on the same page as us, and it goes right the way up to board level with all the new directors, fully supportive of the academy, everyone in the building understands the impact that academy players can have on our first team if you provide that framework that platform you know and that structure and that's what we've got um, and that'll continue like I said whilst ever I'm manager of the football club even when we were I don't know we were 17th or 18th 19th when I took over still play the kids still play the academy lads I call them the kids just that they're not older than your Sean McDonald's of this word that you know they need a bit of help every now and again but you know, we've, we've, you've got to give them that safe, secure environment to be able to express themselves without fear of, but without fear of failure, really. You know, failure is not a bad thing as long as you learn from it. Um, and and I'm, a, I'm a big believer in don't don't be afraid to try. You know, the, the day that you, you're scared not to try and push the boundaries, yeah, that's the day when you need to have a chat with yourself. You sent me to have a chat with me uh, to get to the bottom of it. And, and all our players push, push their own boundaries and continue to push boundaries. That's why they've done so well. And that's the, that's the aim of the game, to keep pushing and keep getting better. You know, Ryan Wintle signs for Cardiff because he kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And good luck to him. You know, so, you know, and I'm just, you know Harry and Perry, and I'm sure there'll be some more in the future. So that's the aim of the game. And it, it's not... It's not just down to me, you know. Or maybe some people would put it down to me, I don't know. But it's not. It's a collective team effort. I was going to talk about Ryan Wintle at the end, but we might as well just complete that a little bit because he's become that third player out of that group of players last year to join up in, in the Championship. But as you say, he came from Allsage of Town and worked his socks off and got his just rewards. It would have been nice to have a a few thousand quid in the bank, but well, it didn't happen. That's the way it is. But it adds kudos to your club, must do. Yeah, you'd think so. You'd think so. Obviously, it'd be nice to have a thing. You know, he was, if he'd have signed his contract, would have sold him this summer because time was right. But he didn't. He didn't believe he would do. You know, that's him and his agent. You know, that's not my... Um, well, there's no point talking about it, really. Um you know, so that's that's where we're at. So good luck to him. Hope he works out for him. Uh, he continues to work hard. He's still got things to work on. But I'm sure he'll do okay. You do with him ripping it up, Dave. He's got an international transfer percentage there. If he comes out of Wales and goes into England, you never know. It might still work in your favour. I think there's a bit of a ruling on that. Anyway, let's t- talk a, a bit I different. I think you've got to be under 23. Oh, is that right? Oh, I've missed that one. Yeah. Do you mean oh. for FIFA transfer compensation? Yeah, yeah. 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 12 to 23, that game. All oh, right. Well, let's talk about the second stages of the, of the Euros then, Dave. We're, we're all watching. We're getting ready to uh, see what can happen from starting this weekend. You're that League One manager and, and your coaches as well. You'll be watching. Your coaches will be watching. Can you learn things from the world top managers and top coaches and implement at your level? Yeah, well, I shall have a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt, um, I've, I've spent a lot of time watching the Euros. Um, certainly last week, that's for sure, we, I was on the pro license for five days. So we watched lots of games during, during the five days um, where you actually had to study them and analyse them. And you can definitely learn stuff. You know, I'm thinking <clears throat> we, we, we watched France against Germany. And, uh, and it was, you know, I'm not one to... Uh, I'm certainly not better than Joachim Lowe, the Germany manager. 
you know, can't be. The international manager had been there 15 years, 18 years, something ridiculous amount of time. But even I thought, if, if you think Gundogan and Cruz are going to get the better of Kante, Pogba and Rabio in midfield, you, you need your head testing. Because three against them three is hard. Never mind Gundogan and Cruz against. And Gundogan and Cruz are top players. Even I once have played two against that three, Pogba and, and, and Kante and, and Rabio. So I hope that they go with two midfield against England's three on um, on Tuesday night, for example, because I think that could be a really good uh, way for England to control the game. You know, so I'll pin my colours to the mast now, if you like, and say that if that happens, I think England will have a very good night. Because I'm not sure that the two um, wing backs for Germany will get the better of the two English full backs, whichever two uh, Southgate picks. So when you sit and analyse and study and look at the games, you know, that's the sort of thing we do, if you like, and I'll be glued on uh, Tuesday night to, to, and I'll be intrigued to see how it pans out And because obviously you're not party to which players have trained well and how they're feeling and you're not party to the game plan. And so you have to, you know, you have to try and work it all out, you know, an hour before the game, if you like, with, with the team sheets. You're doing it blind, obviously, because you don't, you know, see, you haven't seen the players up close. But, you know, it'd be interesting. I think if England do get the better of Germany, I think they've got a great chance to go deep into the tournament. I do. Um, having not been exciting in any way, shape, or form. But then I think you've got to be careful what you wish for. I think if, uh, if they win the next sort of three games, 1 0, and get to the final, I don't think anyone's going to complain. Whereas I think if they lose 4 3, I think uh, they'll complain, but just not as much. So, you know, I think there's uh, there's method to the madness, that's for sure. Well, that's a look forward to, and we'll all be glued to that for you, your staff, your fans, your players, and everybody connected to the club. It's been an exciting 24 hours or so because those cup draws have been made. And your fixtures are out and you're starting off with the, the League Two champions at home in, in League One. Just your general thoughts now that you're tick, ticking away. Yeah, it's, it's always exciting seeing the fixtures, isn't it? You always look first game, last game, Christmas, your birthday, your wife's birthday, kids' birthdays, you know. That's what you do, isn't it? That's what everyone does. Um, I'm no different, you know. I think uh, after Cheltenham, I think we've got three away games, length and breadth of the country, so um, we've got some travelling to do. But listen, we've got to play them all. It's, I don't think it's anywhere near as tough as last year's start. Last year's start, we had, we had the second toughest for, for league position of where the teams were after 10 games, which nobody spoke about, which was fine. You know, we don't want to speak about it, to be honest. And we did okay and we come through it. And we're, like I say, we're 12 months further on in our development, in getting used to League One. And it's going to be a tough competitive league. We all know that. There's some big guns. There might be a bigger one in Derby coming. So, you know, that's whatever happens. We've got to make sure that we're prepared and we stick to our principles and, and be as good as we were last year, but a little bit better, certainly in front of goal. And if we are, then we'll give anyone a game. 